Hello, my YouTube friends. Thanks for joining in today. Man, we got a lot of great things going on. And one is a Sure SM7B microphone giveaway. <clears throat> man, I get so pumped up talking about this. All you have to do, man, is hit that subscribe button, slam that bell, type down there as to why you love a Sure microphone. It can be any Sure microphone, man. The 57, the 58, it doesn't matter. Just type in down there as to why you like a Sure microphone, and that'll enter in the contest. Man, I get so pumped up, man. But today, I wanted to talk about what is your dream studio? Mine is burning tubes of manly gear, vintage microphones with a glass omni view. Wow, a glass omni view. You might be asking yourself, what the heck is he talking about, a glass omni view? Well, I will tell you. It has to do about with your surroundings and your aesthetics of everything. I'm checking on something, guys. Sorry about that. I'm just making sure my internal speakers. See, I'm using uh, this USB. And that's the problem I've been having with a bunch of clicks and ticks in my audio. Was whenever I go to my live stream, uh, instead of using my interface... It actually kicks over to my microphone in my computer. Don't ask me why it does it whenever I set it for my interface. And uh, my speaker is blown in my computer. And uh, so that's what I, I figured. finally figured it out, man. I finally figured it out while all those ticks and pops and stuff were in my audio. So now it should be crystal clear without any pops. And I'm hoping it all sounds good. But OmniView, back to OmniView. Well, you know, I tell you what, man, um, I have a dream studio that I've always dreamt of having in an area where um, it was somewhere perhaps maybe um, deep in the woods with two creeks running in front of the studio and one behind the studio as it splits like this, two nice creeks, and uh, built in some type of little cabin somewhere with uh, my studio in the center and glass all the way around. And in the center is the hub, and that's where my studio is in here. And on the outside perimeter of the cabin is uh, where the musicians can set up in different areas and look out again. So my studio would be glass, the outer perimeter would be glass, and then everybody would set up in this area or even back here. You could have orchestra setting up back here, cellos and whatnot on this side, and uh, guitars and whatever thing on this side, and you could strategically place everybody, and, um, and everybody would just have an excellent view of looking out into the wilderness uh, with creeks and deer and whatever walking by, and... Uh, having those beautiful aesthetics to get in the vibe of just creating beautiful music, man. And uh, I see I see that as a vision as my all-time, um, you know, studio build with uh, all the manly gear, all my manly tube preamps and compressors, and uh, actually having different pieces of gears strategically uh, for each microphone and for each type of vocal that I would be actually doing. Everything from your solid state gear, I think I'd have all Avalon, all my Avalon gear and some Neve 1073s. And then uh, I'd love to have a bunch of Tube Tech stuff. I love Tube Tech. Tube Tech rocks, man. It's kind of like one of those... Um, I don't know, it's kind of like a piece of gear that's kind of, not that it didn't notice that much, but uh, it's just kind of like been under um, the best kept secret for a long, long time. A bunch of that tube tech stuff, man. And uh, 
I want to say Ing Ingway Malmstein has his whole studio set up with tube tech gear. And uh, it adds like a real, real nice buttery sheen, thickening, just, you know, uh, thickening, um, I don't know, ice cream to the mix, man. It just adds a lot of nice uh, color and character uh, to your, um, your vocal tracks, man. But I'd like I'd like a set of all Avalon, just a rack of Avalon stuff, all your solid state, beautiful, crystal clear, open sounding stuff. And then I'd like a lot of uh, manly gear, everything from the ELOP, um, several ELOP pieces, massive, passive pieces. Um, man, I just I mean, what's your dream studio, man? Type in there as to what what some of the pieces that you'd like in your studio. But, uh, and also, uh, some maybe 192s, um, my inverters and whatnot, interfaces, some 192s, and, uh, just to be able to record it at a very, very high sample rate. And, uh, you know, they say that when you're at that high of a sample rate, that, uh, you really don't need to, a lot of, a lot of people really don't need to bounce their audio from there to, um tape because it sounds it simulates tape so well um at that high of a sample rate that a lot of times people don't even go to bouncer tracks from there to um you know one inch tape or whatever but uh i'd love to have all that stuff i'd love to have a few um reel to reels in there everything from a two inch tape studer um one inch tape um all your all your manly gear, tube gear, and also I really dig, I really dig empirical lab stuff. <clears throat> Got to have some distressors in there, man. Got to have some fatsos in there. And, uh, you know, I'd like, uh, I'd like all my, um, stereo compressors and what, what not to be linked up to my pro tools and all that stuff. That way, once I'm using my pro tools and all that good stuff, it can actually feed to and from, so I can use that stuff in real time and uh, get back to some recalls and stuff like that and uh, be able to use that gear, outboard gear, with my doll, you know. So that would be really kind of cool. But I, I really I really like the idea of having a studio that's kind of like an octagon shape, all glassed in, and then uh, that's the outer perimeter, like I say, and then a center hub. And then, say, 20 feet out from that center hub where my mixing board would be and all my preamps and compressors and everything in that room, uh, it'll be like a, you know, a two-stage type glass thing that I could even see out into the wilderness, too, outside. Have all the musicians set up and uh, talk about get some really cool tracks done, right? I mean, you can invite um, people from all over the world Canada, all over the world to come to your um, beautiful studio that you've built and designed, not just for having all the high-end gear and equipment in there, a first-class flagship equipment, but also for the aesthetics and just the view and just even if they weren't even going to record, just to be able to come in for a day and tour the studio and just get the experience of being into um, a very serene, um, comfortable feeling atmosphere with all the beautiful gear and all the beautiful preamps and top-notch flagship stuff, all your beautiful ribbon microphones, um, you know, just have an array, have an arsenal of all of all the microphones that's in every major studio throughout time, you know. Have about five U47s from Telefunken to Neumann's. Have about five 67s or, uh, you know, all your 67, 47s, 49s, 48s, all your Neumann stuff, all your Electro Voice stuff. And just have this mic locker that pff, is like a museum, man. Like a museum. They could actually tour around. And in these glass case boxes, 
that's your mic locker and have all your microphones in these glass cases, you know, like a trophy case, right? Like you see in the old trophy cases and whatnot, they're glassed in and you can shut them up. And you've got all your Neumanns hanging in there. And, uh, and the artist can say, mm, I want to sing through that one today. What year did that come out? What year did that Neumann? Oh, that, that Neumann came out in 1958. Yeah, I want to sing through that one today. You know, and just guitars, all your guitars, and uh, I don't know. It just, that's my dream studio, is that it would be built not just for my idea of the perfect recording studio, but it would be built for anyone in the music business uh, whatsoever uh, would just really love to come tour and enjoy and get an experience of a lifetime, uh, you know, and be able to stay and then have a second house, you know, where if uh, people wanted to stay or whatever they could. And uh, I don't know. I just keep thinking of the perfect studio built, you know, one of my dream studios of all time, having all the gear and money's no option, right? be able to have uh, so much so many people behind you on the same idea that money would be no option as far as creating something uh, having the perfect studio and uh, have a lot of people that would go out and do the work, do the legwork to search out in every nook and cranny to get every piece of gear known to man <laughs> that's my dream that's my dream being the uh being a um engineer is actually not just a studio but a place that everyone that records musicians or engineers would want to come to and tour your place because the atmosphere is so awesome i mean think about it when you go to a restaurant and yeah, the food might be good, but sometimes you would go places because of the hospitality. And sometimes you would go to places because it's super, super clean. And sometimes you would go to places because just the atmosphere was perfect. You know, it wasn't really, really loud. There was, there was areas where you could sit down in the restaurant that was kind of tucked away in little nook and crannies little candlelight it was you know it was uh just it was the atmosphere it was the whole vibe of the place that brought you there and money was really not an option uh as to how much it cost to be there just simply because you enjoyed being there and it felt good being there and uh my dream studio would be to create a studio to where it was about atmosphere, aesthetics, a place where you could go and just feel at peace and relaxed and enjoy the whole experience of the perfect recording studio. And uh, not in some high rise somewhere looking out over the city, a bunch of cars and whatnot moving by, not in you know, some confined dungeon area where, you know, it's dark and gloomy and clammy in there. Um, but in an area that you really feel free and you could go and even in a place like that, your mind would start thinking and you get creative and be able to come up with new music on the spot just because your atmosphere was so um, pleasing pleasing to the eye, pleasing to the soul. And um, you could just get really, really, really creative, you know? So last night I was laying down. Uh, actually, early I took a little kind of a cat nap, midday nap. And uh, I was thinking, uh, as I was laying there and I closed my eyes, I was thinking of the perfect recording studio and what, uh, what I'd like to see someday happen. And uh, all these different visions were coming up in my mind as to having, um, with these two ravines and these two creeks 
going through um, the wilderness in this octagon shaped uh, huge glass um, building and recording studio with a beautiful carpet um, just just stunning you know and more about uh, the aesthetics inside not just inside but what surrounds the studio itself and then the drive to get there you know uh, I just kept envisioning this nice windy road whatever through the wilderness uh, till you finally made it to this high peak that overlooked all these creeks on both sides of you and um with all the best gear known to man that's ever been made in your studio. Everything from Dean guitars to Gibson guitars to Les Pauls to Fenders, Fender Strats, Fender Tellies, Gretsch, all your Gretsch guitars from, you know, the 50s and up, you know, just, a, just you know, probably one whole room or two just filled with guitars um, in a climate controlled atmosphere to where you could leave them out no problem and uh, they'd still be in great shape and uh, so you got all the guitars to choose from, you got all your mics to choose from, you got all your preamps and compressors some of the best known to man uh, and just be able to do any kind of work that you needed to do in that studio and if you weren't booking people for studio work, of course, you know you would be. But uh, it'd be nice to uh, just be a nice little tour place, too, you know. People could uh, come and go or just have certain months maybe where you just did touring activities, you know. And then other months where you just did nothing but um, recording for artists. So I'm sure there's a way you could set all that up and get... Um, Get a bunch of masterminds together with a bunch of money and uh, put something together, something together for everyone to enjoy for a lifetime of going and just the most incredible recording studio, not just average, but the most incredible recording studio known to man that any engineer would want to be uh, hired to go there and do work for any major artist uh, in the world. And I'm talking big, not just a little big, but big. I'm thinking kind of huge on a scale that's uh, unknown, unthinkable. So that was kind of my idea of the perfect home, uh, perfect recording studio. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. If you love recording music and you love anything to do with music, your mind kind of drifts off on cool stuff like that from time to time. But yeah, man, everybody's ringing that bell. And if you haven't rang that bell, ring the bell now and uh, subscribe to my channel. This is the coolest channel to be on if you like anything to do with recording and mixing and mastering and microphones. As you can see, microphones is one of my favorite um, one of my favorite things to talk about. I love microphones. In fact, I have a, uh, if you missed last night's show, I have a RE20 coming in. I was saying it was going to come in Saturday, but it doesn't look like it's going to be here until Monday. But when it arrives Monday, I'm going to be doing an unboxing on the RE20 and uh, comparing it to, as far as the aesthetics go, comparing it to the um, EV642 that uh, I did a video last night about. And uh, the appearance of the two microphones is, uh, just is mind-boggling how... They created something over 50 years ago, and uh, it kind of compares as far as the aesthetics go as to the RE20. And so I'm going to put them up side by side for you guys to check out, see what you think, man. But uh, yeah, what's your dream studio, man? Share some of your thoughts as to what you love in your dream studio and what you might you know, want to put in your studio someday or have in your studio. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts as to what you would like to see, uh, how a studio built, and uh, what are some of the equipment that you would like to see in that studio. And uh, for me, I just kept thinking not really for myself, you know, even though it was a dream studio that I could dream up. and um, But really it's about a studio that 
anyone and everyone can enjoy uh, from all walks of life at any age, whether they're 10, 12, or 60, uh, be able to go there and just enjoy, wow, and be able to leave and go, wow, that is the most beautiful studio uh, I've ever seen in my life, ever been to, and uh, just really, really enjoyed it with a, a really neat experience of being there. And uh, I see, I see in the studio too, not just one board, not just one, you know, SSL board, but uh, many, many mixing boards in there. Maybe, uh, maybe six or ten different, um, different mixing boards to choose from and to go back and forth from. Um, so we're talking big here, man. We're not talking little. We're talking big time. And, uh, but anyone would want to go there. Anyone would want to go there and uh, engineer there, do work there, and just be a part to say they've been there, uh, they've been there and worked there, you know, or just had a tour there. And so I, I see this. I see this place as not a place for me, but like I say, for a place that uh, anybody in the music industry would want to go, and you know, say they've been there, recorded there, or took a tour there. And um, so, yeah, my, my mom was just kind of getting creative and thinking of all the tools that I would like in there and all the different microphones and mixing boards and just just an array, a rainbow of every piece of gear known to man, the best of the best in the perfect atmosphere. So that's kind of my dream studio, man. Um, you know, I've uh, I've always like thinking up new different ideas and getting creative whether it was with music or whatever or or even the backdrop here that you guys are seeing here in my studio um it's uh i try to make things uh aesthetically look cool and in balance and um lighting with everything from lighting to the smells in the studio and the vibe and everything like that it just makes you kind of want to go in there and relax and be a part of it you know and so uh, that plays a large role, you know, on everything for me is how things look and uh, the cleanliness and everything in your studio. So, uh, yeah, man, you know, if you guys have any ideas on what, what your favorite studio would be, type down there as to what some of your ideas are, man. I know, um, <clears throat> I know it's easy to kind of get to think only what you can do as far as making an awesome studio. But sometimes it's, it's neat when you think outside of your box, right? And you think of what many people can do if many people came together and uh, got creative. And so it's not just your idea, but it's everyone's idea as to creating the most beautiful studio known to man and uh, the aesthetics and everything along that go with it. And so when you get more people together, um, many can do more than just one. It kind of makes me think of uh, the ants, you know. You ever got bitten by an ant? They don't just bite you one at a time. You know, they wait till they get, you know, 50 or 60 of them on you, and then they all hit you at one time. And so uh, go to the ant for wisdom, man. And uh, I, think, I think like that, like what if, you know, many, many people got together and money was not an object, and put together this, the the most beautiful recording studio known to man, in a serene area, and had every piece of gear known to man, top notch flagship equipment, that everyone could tour, and enjoy, and be a part of. So, man, put your two cents down there, and put your two cents as to what is your dream studio. Have you ever dreamt of um, building a studio or? having other people involved in the build. And um, what's your dream studio look like? What's some of the gear in your studio that you would have in there? Would it be all solid state? Would, would it be everything? Um, I don't know. I really like, I like everything. I like solid state and I like tube gear. <laughs> so my dream studio would have a little bit of everything in it and uh, for everyone to enjoy and uh, be a part of 
for vocals it just depends you know every 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 artist is different and uh everybody has different ideas of what their dream studio would be and so i kind of wanted to let you in on mine but it wouldn't just be my dream studio it would be um it would be many people pulling together with a lot of hats as to having one goal getting something done and uh, the same target to shoot for and money wouldn't be an object with uh with these people it would be more about a lifetime um studio recording studio that everyone uh could enjoy for many generations to come be able to tour and stay and uh every engineer top-notch engineer in the world would love to be a part of uh recording there for you know famous artists and whatnot so again uh, if you just clicking in man uh to this channel hit that subscribe bell man hit that subscribe bell and also i wanted to let you guys know man share share the video if you like the video that way it can kind of get in the algorithm of things and other people who enjoy recording and mixing and mastering and all that other good stuff could uh could actually be a part and see some of the cool things that we talk about here at audio master recording studio and a lot of times if it isn't shared or liked and all that other good stuff it just gets lost in the algorithm it doesn't get that many hits or anything so if you enjoy this channel man please hit that subscribe button bam it's easy slam that bell it's easy man also, type down there, as to why you love a sure microphone, and that'll get you into this contest to win one of these babies, man. You don't want to miss out on that. And uh, I was talking before, um, after we stopped doing some of the giveaways on the Shure SM7Bs, I, um, I'm right now, I'm creating a nice Audio Master t-shirt that I am going to be giving away each week to different people that write in. And uh, I'll probably do that for three months on the Audio Master t-shirts. And I'm going to do black shirts with white lettering, Audio Master. And I haven't decided on actually what all I'm going to put on it. So it's still in the works right now. But I'm going to have summer shirts as well, too. They're going to be light color, probably white with gray. And uh, so for some of you people that like to wear tank tops and t-shirts in the summer i'm gonna have audio master t-shirts for you guys too and uh anyway it's just a way to give back man it's just a way to get give back and also to uh help the channel grow here and so by your help and only your help man you can help me do that clicking that subscribe and sharing my videos man hitting the thumbs up and also leaving your comments because i love i love getting back with each and every one of you guys man and uh, so, you know, we're talking about different things every day. Today, I wanted to come on early because I'm not going to be sure. I try to come on at 7 Texas time every night and give a little bit of something for you guys to chew on and swallow. Whether you're just getting into audio recording or whether you're a master at recording, I always try to touch on some something that um, kind of stirs the mind, you know, get you thinking, you know, what you can do in your studio and what might can help you out here and there and uh so but yeah i'm gonna be doing the t-shirt giveaways man so that's gonna be really kind of cool man everybody loves t-shirts uh to relax in and uh to just chill out in so i thought well why not come out i do have an audio master t-shirt it was kind of like a trial run i did but i really want to do something that i can give out to um uh, many of you guys so that y'all can all enjoy but yeah, man, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, do now. We got a lot of cool things coming up. And also, I'm going to be doing the unboxing on the, on the RE20. You don't want to miss out on that on that piece. It's going to be cool, man. Super, super cool. You don't want to miss out on that microphone. Be me doing the unboxing on that. But uh, yeah, the electric voices, they're awesome. Awesome microphones. This one up here is 50 years old plus. And I did a video on, on the EV642 uh, last night. I actually have two of them. Whammo! And they both beautiful microphones, man. So it's going to be kind of cool getting that RE20 in tomorrow night. I mean, uh, Monday. And doing that unboxing on that. 
But uh, yeah, man, I might come on again at seven tonight. I'm not sure. It just depends on uh, what happens the rest of the day, whether I'm going to be able to come in or not. But we've got some great, got some great material coming up, man. You don't want to miss out on any of it, man. Hit that subscribe button and join on in. Also, leave your comments, man. Don't be afraid to leave your comments. I love getting back with each and every one of y'all, man, on different things, different topics. Whether you're just now buying equipment or want to know about some cool equipment that you've been reading about, hit me up, man. I'll put in my two cents. And uh, hopefully we can get you on the right direction as to uh, what good gear is and what what not so good gear is, man. There's nothing worse than making a bad, um, bad purchase on a piece of gear with regrets. And uh, shoot, man. I know I've had my uh, bad bad calls and bought uh, studio gear before in the past that I wasn't so happy with, man. But uh, I've also made some good choices with no regrets. One is this one right here, this AEA R44 ribbon microphone. It'll set you back a little bit. But I tell you what, I bought this piece with no regrets. And uh, so, yeah, man, hit me up on, uh, on what... If you're just now getting into recording and you don't know what to buy, hit me up, man. I'd love to uh, put in my two cents on what, you know, maybe get you on the right, steer you in the right direction. And then uh, you can do the research after that and see if uh, that's the direction you want to go, man. But uh, thank you guys so much for joining in today, man. I'll probably see you tonight at 7, so stay around. Uh, click that bell, and uh, what that does is lets you know ahead of time, hey, I'm coming on. And uh, you can check me out. So again, if you haven't hit that subscribe, do it now. Slam that bell. And we will see you again.